to you. Good day YouTubers and welcome to this update. It has been nearly four years since my first posting so I thought I'd quickly take you through what has changed over those four years. So this project started off with a 3 kVA inverter similar size to this. Um, I then moved it up to a 5 kVA because I couldn't cope with the additional demands. Um, I eventually ended up by acquiring a second hand 5 kVA and pairing the two together. So this is now a 10 kVA system uh, with a slave and a master. My frustration with these inverters, which are basically, they, they fall under various different names. My, my main frustration with this hybrid inverter, although it's very flexible and very cost effective, is it is, it has a very high quiet and current or overnight drain when, when it's, it's just turned on. Now, many people have argued that I have been measuring it incorrectly and since I have acquired a Victron energy meter, I know exactly how much power is going in and out of the batteries. And these inverters typically with very small parasitic loads draw between 200 and 250 um, watts. So when you have two of these as a slave and master, you know, half a kilowatt per hour is being taken up by the inverters. And that puts a huge strain on the batteries. So I started off with just lead acid batteries, um, 110 um, amp hour, and then doubled up from four to eight. Um, I quite quickly realized these inverters do need a good capacity battery, otherwise they just flicker and they struggle with switching between um, utility and, and battery. Um, I then moved to AGMs, and I used those AGMs and that battery pack for four years. In fact, I think I've actually covered the capital outlay of this installation. In four years, I got this uh, unit secondhand uh, for about half the price of a new one. It is actually a 5 kVA, even if it's in a smaller case. And really, I can't complain. I've, I've had very good use out of these inverters. Yes, the switchover um, can be irritating, and I notice things like my um, Amazon Echo will reset uh, when there's a flicker or jump between um, utility and and, um, and, and uh, batteries. So that's you know frustrating, but uh, you know you, you get what you pay for. So these are actually going to be um, decommissioned, and I'm moving to a Victron uh, MultiPlus 5 kVA. So I'm replacing a 10 kilowatt system with a 5 kilowatt system because I will have more flexibility of management. Look, the one thing with these kind of hybrid inverters is they're difficult to manage a user profile. So um, I also uh, completely rewired my distribution board. This is all new um, Hager kits. And I've installed various contactors and timers to try and manage things like pool, um, pool pumps. Uh, and I've even installed um, some light sensing equipment so that my pool pump doesn't come on during a cloudy day. But quite frankly, to try and manage your whole solar environment with all of these bespoke pieces makes it very complicated. And if ever you go on holiday and get someone to look after your house, it's almost impossible to explain how all these things work. The one thing I have done is fit a, a, a bypass switch. So if anything goes wrong with the solar, you can flip back to utility with no, so it's, it's a one switch over solution in case of, of any error. The, probably the most valuable underrated piece of equipment that I've acquired has been this Victron Energy Meter. Um, this BMV, um, it's Bluetooth, it gives you really accurate uh, results of, of utilization of your battery. I have moved from, from lesser lead acid to, to LIFO, so um, I can now utilize the full capacity of my battery. But these devices have a relay, a lot of people don't um, realize that the relay is a very valuable part of the, the whole setup. So I can program the relay that it will only switch to utility when it gets down to, in my case, 10% because I'm using the uh, Lithium technology, I can use 90% of the, of the capacity of the battery, and that allows me to drive a contactor to switch utility on and off. Otherwise, what happens is you end up with a full battery um, that's been charged overnight by the utility, and then the sun comes out in the morning and, and you're not um, utilizing that extra energy you've collected during the day. So with the lithium battery, I collect and charge the battery during the course of the day, and then I use that battery overnight to run my loads. As I mentioned, these are quite inefficient. The Victron that's going to replace this is down to 11 watts, and these are 250 each. So you can see that I now have a completely different um, amount of energy stored that I can reuse, and, and hopefully that will have a, a sort of 10 to 20 year lifespan as opposed to three or four years. So no complaints, the system paid for itself. We've had a lot of load shedding here in South Africa. That's actually when the utility cannot provide enough electricity. So we've had lots of blackouts effectively. 
and this system has been invaluable keeping my house powered, my internet connection, um, uh, computers and, and all the other things that we need. So that's the, the updates of what has happened over the last um, four years. As I mentioned, the system's pretty much paid for itself. These have got second-hand value, so I'll be selling these on. Um, and of course, uh, quite a big investment in, in lithium batteries, but over a much longer period of time. So I hope you find this useful. Um, I will include some photographs of how the battery packs have developed over time. And um, I look forward to updating you on the next chapter.